<sighs> oh, please, what's happening? Okay, we're back in the room. Back in oh, the room. Yeah. That's never happened before. Okay, so hopefully we're going to pick people up. Okay, hopefully we're going to pick people up. Oh, I don't know. Nobody's coming. Oh, what a shame. Right, hang on a sec. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Right, six people joining. Basically, what's happening? Right, you're joining us. Can you hear us? Can you see me? Right, what's what happened? I had to stop the video and start again. Okay. Okay. Right, people are joining us again. I don't know what happened there. Sorry, guys. We're back in the room. Back in the room. Okay. That's good. I know it's not good. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Right, guys, people are joining us. Here we are. We've got 10 people joining us again. Right, people are joining back up again. I don't know what happened there. Lovely. So I don't know what happened there. The, it suddenly stopped. It said I had trouble with the video. I've had to start a new one. So that's not great, but hey ho, hey ho, we'll just see what see what happens. Okay, so um, right, we've only got nine people back. That's a shame. We're going to crack on because we've got time. We've got time. Okay, Josie. So, um, which Baldrick poem from Blackadder did we f feature in our first World War centenary presentation? I think it was called Boom Boom. It was called Boom Boom Boom. It was. It was called Boom Boom Boom. Okay, so uh, people are coming back, I think. Yes, we uh, we lost quite a few people because we had to stop the video. Right, okay, what national magazine wrote a feature article about the group as part of the Cross of the Switch Bay publicity? It was uh, the Salvation Army, the war cry. It was, it was the war cry. Well done. Okay, Josie, well, listen, lovely. So you got them all right, well done. We're gonna have to move on, I'm afraid, but lovely, thank you for coming and you will look forward to seeing your new avatar, which joins the whole company. By the end of it, hopefully we're gonna have everybody with their own avatar. So Josie, lovely to see you and we will speak soon. Take care. Yep. Okay, okay. God bless. Bye. Bye then. Bye. Bye. Okay. Right, guys, I don't know what happened there. That is such a shame. That is such a shame. So uh, what we're going to do is we are now going to move into the other room because, and I'm going to take, I'm gonna, we're going to go to, do you remember we're going into Studio B? Do you remember this? So I'm going to take my, so we're going to go into Studio B. Okay. Hopefully, yeah, people are rejoining. This is good. People are rejoining. Okay. Okay, here we go. So, guys, we are back in the room. Okay. So, I don't know what happened there. But, um, basically, what we're doing, guys, is we're going to carry on where we left off. Okay? And um, uh, we have got, for you, uh, Poetry Corner coming up. We've got the Corona Song Challenge as well. So, um, uh, we've got... Laura has written a poem for us today. Um, I've got a poem which is in the other room, which I will get in a second. Um, and um, we've also got a, a, a Claudia's going to do us a poem as well. So we're still carrying on, though, with this, the uh, Corona, the Corona, write a Corona song challenge. OK, and uh, guys, what we're doing with this is that we're going to we, we've had quite a few people do some really great stuff. Lots of really creative stuff happening. And we're doing one a week because when we come back, we're going to put together probably a production of all the stuff that's been written. There's been some really great poetry and stuff like that that's been written uh, while we've been in lockdown. So um, what I want us to do is uh, collate that. Now, Sh Sharon wrote a poem a few weeks back. And I have to say her poem was amazing. Um, she's actually written this um, this uh, song to uh, you are you are well it's a very famous song and um i'm just going to play it and you'll see um so if you are still feeling inspired and i know there are a couple of other people who have written songs i know laura's written another song uh, other people have written uh, a couple of songs that we will can do obviously we're going to be here for a few weeks and we'll do one a week so it is still not too late now we've written mostly comic songs at the moment but you might want to write a serious song so have a little listen to this Okay, this is what Sharon's written. I, I think it's I think it's brilliant. We've got a virus, a corona virus. It makes me angry day after day. 
It'll never beat us, though it tries hard. We will, we will overcome, so please go away. We've got a virus, coronavirus, it makes me angry day after day. It'll never beat us, although it tries hard. We will win, so please go away. One night whilst we were all laying sleeping, it crept into all of our lives. But we all stood firm, we were united. We will all hold our heads up high. But a virus, coronavirus, it makes me angry day after day. Although it tries hard, we will win, so please go away. In our, in our thoughts now, and never leaves us, but I am sure it will disappear. There will be sunshine and we'll be happy. We'll unite and lose all our fear. We've got a virus, coronavirus. It makes me angry. It makes me day after day. It'll never beat us, although it tries. We will win, so please go away. Okay, I think that is really lovely. I know uh, Gareth Malone's uh, chorus are doing that at the moment, um, and I know she's sort of taken that sort of a bit of the setting from that. But I think the words are great, and um, to be fair, when I was playing it through this morning, I actually felt quite emotional. You know, um, John was alluding it to it yesterday, and um, I think uh, other people, uh, Claudia, has said actually we have good days and bad days, and actually it's tough for everybody. Everybody's really feeling that sense of, you know, uh, cabin fever will you know how long we're going to be like this um so i think it's really good to have songs like this that you know focus on you know when we all come out and uh, we're going to be together and i can give margie a big hug okay guys so what we're going to do now is we are going to uh we're going to get claudia on the phone because claudia is going to tell us one of her poems so we're going to now move into um the poetry corner section uh which obviously we're going to get mark on the phone this is mark's corner uh, this is where Mark is with his bow tie, and um, bless him, uh, I'll tell you, there are some really fantastic poems coming. So, right, let's get Claudia. Call Claudia, right, call Claudia Streets. Your message to Claudia Streets says call Claudia. Okay, <laughs> let me know if there's anything else you need. Right. <laughs> It's all going wrong this morning, isn't it? Tech, where's Brian and John when you need them? Help me, John! Help me, Brian! Call Claudia Streets. Right. <laughs> Gosh. Right, I'm going to get Claudia on the phone. Right. Contacts. Here we are. Claudia Streets. Okay. Hello? Claudia. Hi. How are you, lovely? Yeah, I'm Maury, thanks. Are you How okay? are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you coping? Um, yeah, so I'm um, writing on my writing. I try and do like half an hour a day. That's good. Well, I have to say, you've, yeah. done, you've done loads so far, which is really good, which is why yeah. we wanted to get you on. We've got one of your poems. I know you've done the Bootalicious, uh, the song, which was brilliant, we heard the other week. And you, you've done a uh, you've done a, a poem already. 
So you're going to sing, you're going to uh, read us Claudia's poem, Corona's Little Sister. Is this correct? Twist, twisted transistor. No, 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 no. Terrible Corona. Okay. It's the Hey, Hey, You, Corona's Little Sister, that one, yeah? Yeah, it's based on Twisted Transistor by Corn. Okay. Out of it? Right, we're ready when you are. Okay. Right. Hey you, hey you, Corona's little sister. Get to your contagious coronavirus. Hold your boat between your hands and pray. Don't cough, don't cough in the shops or else you'll have to leave. Can't buy new antibacterial washing of liquid. A lonely night where Joe can visit me. But I'm not giving up because someday I'll hold him in my arms again. Nothing to do, nothing to do, nothing to do. Because there's nothing to do. And they grow up inside you. Inside you, hopefully not forever. Nothing to do. Your boredom screams will become a whisper. Hang on, everything comes to an end. Travel Corona. Well done. Well done. Love the singing. Claudia, well done. So what what's that what's that song from? It's based on um Twisted Transistor by Corn, K L R N. Okay, okay. Twisted Transistor by Corn. Okay, well, well done. This is good. Okay. Well, listen, uh, Claudia, we're going to have to let you go. Thank you so much. I think there'll be another bar of chocolate for you. You've already had one, haven't you? How many do I get? As many as you, um, you know, get submit. You know, it can be going on so for months. Do you get one per song? You get one per song, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it one per song? performed or what I sent to you yeah the one the, the one that's performed so yeah be one this week lovely right listen I've got to let okay, you go because we're, you. we're how are you are you okay yeah thank you I'm okay yeah I've, I've, I'm okay yeah I haven't been brilliant but I'm okay I'm fine okay. all right okay listen we'll speak soon all right okay thank you take bye. care Claudia bless you bye okay so we're gonna get um we're gonna get um well now we have a real treat for you. Um yesterday I videoed Laura. Now Laura has um Laura has written a great poem for us. Okay, and um this is something a bit more serious. And what I think is really good is that people are really now beginning to sort of think about what they're writing in terms of you know something that's perhaps a bit more um not, not that you hadn't before, but um you know, there's more serious stuff coming through, which is really good that's less jokey and more profound. And I think actually, you know, I think the, the longer we're in this, I think that will happen. To be fair, I've written two pieces, which I'm gonna to do today. I was saying to uh, Laura, actually on the phone a couple of days ago, I woke up six o'clock in the morning, jumped out of bed, so inspired, and I wrote it just like that. And that's very often how it comes, okay? And I was also reading a, a really interesting article about Winston Churchill during the Second World War, where they wanted to cut the funding for the arts. And Winston Churchill said, well, if we do that, what's the point in fighting? What are we fighting for? Then actually, you know, culture, art, writing, being creative. Surely that's the freedom that we need to be able to do. And that's what um, that's what they fought for in the Second World War. And uh, so obviously while we're in this uh, lockdown, this could be a really, really positive. The, the, the upside to, you know, all being a separate is that actually we can write some stuff that's really profound because we've perhaps got more time. So, right. OK, I'm going to um, I'm going to show you Laura's piece now. So let's just get it up here. Right. What's going on here? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Right, here we go. Three. Okay, so we have Laura here. Laura, it's great having you again. And um, bless you, you've been doing a lot of creative stuff. And um, the reason why we wanted you to come on today is because you've actually written a poem, haven't you? Yes, I have. So do you want to tell us a little bit about it and then launch into it? Well, in a nutshell, it's just got a little bit to do with 1919, which some of you might know was a pretty hard year. 
and it's also including some of the stuff that the actual world itself how that is you know going um how it is at the moment through the, all this kobe stuff that's going on so that's pretty much it in a nutshell okay well, <laughs> well let's hear it okay <clears throat> some suffer with anxiety the trigger is the unknown when things um, change last minute or people let them down i know that right now things are very unforeseen but just think of what it had been like in 1919. Well, aeroplanes would not be operational till August 25th, as civilized aviation wouldn't start till then, oh split. But looking at the numbers of the living in old London, nearly 9 million then to 7 million in 2000. A huge flu swept over throughout Old Britannia. A quarter million lives were gone. Must have been scary, huh? And just after the war, where many, many mothers lost their sons, the people started panicking, mutinies and strikes were done. So just think of how different it is compared to these days. Well, COVID has actually helped our planet in many ways. The global gases have gone down. It's saved more people than take, keeping animals and plants much more safe. Clearing out of lakes and streams and the air we breathe, it's Mother Nature's way to say, why can you not see? It's man who's destroying life. It's them who need to go. They're killing my baby. And I'm saying blooming no. We've been through worse than this and seen the other side. Just hope that this time we can come out with some pride. That we can live in harmony, work together more. Realise the whole world itself is a thing worth fighting for. We can speak through technology. Back then, they'd never seen. Just think of what they had to deal with in 1919. There you go. Wow, Laura, that is amazing. That is really amazing. No, well done. Oh my goodness. I'll tell you, Laura, we have got some really fantastic stuff for our oh. performance when we come out. We are, you know, we're planning a, a big celebration. So we're gonna have a big party for the guys uh unleashed but we're also uh today we were supposed to be doing our um you know our our um sixth birthday yeah. celebration so in that sense it's sad but actually people have been getting really creative and my goodness lord that is really fantastic well, so you. well yeah. done Brilliant, so. tell me how no 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 not at all how long did it take you to write it and how did it come about uh i wrote it in about 15 minutes that's off of the way with creatives isn't it I just Googled um, stuff about um, flu epidemics. 1919 came up. I took a couple of points from it and then just just wrote. So yeah. No, well done. Laura, thank you so much. Honestly, really fantastic. So okay. listen, lovely, we're going to... We, oh. Okay, that was Laura yesterday. I'll tell you, really gifted girl you know really great stuff really great stuff so you know we've got some we've got we've got we're, we're putting a scrapbook together everything that people have written we're going to save we're going to put into a into a scrapbook and um when we come out you know there's going to be literally loads so we're going to go into the other room uh because um we're going to go into the other room because we're going to get mark on the phone and uh, i'm going to take mark with me look here's mark here's mark he's going to come with me Right, so uh, let me, we're going to go into Studio B. Okay. Okay. So I'm just opening the door. Right. Here we go. Right. And then we're going to get Mark on the phone. Okay. So we're back in. Here we are. Ugh. We're back in Studio B or Studio A rather. Okay, and we're going to get Mark on the phone. Okay, going to do something slightly different now. I'm going to put this. Here we go. Um, I'm going to put this here. Okay, so I need I need Mark. Okay, and I'm going to sit in a chair. So this is going to be a bit different. Oh my gosh! Oh my goodness! Okay, right. Can you see me? That's better. Ah, oh, that's good. I'm so sorry about. Uh, I'm to stop the um stop the uh the live feed because we lost a few people hopefully they'll come back um <clears throat> right <clears throat> so um i'm going to get mark on the phone but first of all i was going to actually just share something that i've written 
um, because it is, as, as is our birthday, um, some of you will uh, remember we're actually six and um, there is a, um, I don't know whether you remember A.A. A. Milne wrote a book called Now We Are Six, which I had when I was a kid and, and uh, when we were very young and it was all about uh, Winnie the Pooh and stuff like that. And there was a great poem in, I think it was Now We Are Six, I think it was, uh, which I knew as a kid, which was called um, Lines and Squares. And I thought um, I'd write a parody of this because it just seemed to sort of make perfect sense. So I'm going to read you the original first of all. Uh, this is from Now We Are Six. Uh, it's called Lines and Squares. Whenever I walk in a London street, I'm ever so careful to watch my feet. And I keep in the squares and the masses of bears who wait at the corners or ready to eat, the sillies who tread on the lines of the street. Go back to their lairs and I say to them, bears, look at me walking in all of the squares. And the little bears, they growl to each other, he's mine. And as soon as he's silly and steps on a line, and some of the bigger bears try to pretend that they came round the corner to look for a friend. And they try to pretend that nobody cares whether you walk on the lines or squares. But only the sillies believe their talk. It's ever so important how you walk. And it's ever so jolly to call out bears. Just watch me walking in all of the squares. Now, I used to love that as a, as a kid. And I have written a poem, which I hopefully will bring a smile to your face. It's called Lines and Steps. <laughs> All right. And it goes like this. Whenever, I'm walk whenever I walk in a talky street, I'm ever so careful who I meet. And I keep in my 12 steps and the masses of dealers who wait at the corners or ready to tempt the sillies who'd snort lines from the dealers they'd meet. Go back to your drug dens. And I say to them, Dealers, just look at how I'm walking in my 12-step freedom. And the weed dealers growl to each other, he's mine. And soon as he's silly and is tempted with a joint, and some of the bigger dealers try to pretend, and they come round the corner to look for a friend. And they try to pretend that a line of Charlie, well, nobody will say whether you're snorting a line or just using again. So only the sillies believe their talk. It's ever so important how you walk. And it's ever so jolly to call out dealers. Just look at how I'm walking in 12 step freedom. <laughs> so um, that's my little attempt at um, a parody of a poem from Now We Are Six. Now we're gonna get lovely Mark, who's here. Mark's here, let's stick in there. There we are. Let's get Mark on the phone. Call Mark Tootle. Calling Mark Tootle. Okay. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Happy birthday, mate. How are we doing? Oh, mate. Thank you. Yeah, we're doing fine. We've had a little cake, and people have been singing, and uh, people are sending us good wishes. It's great. So it's really good. Lots of people uh, birthday today. Mark is birthday. Mark Baker's, Wayne's, Hannah's. So quite a lot of people's birthdays. So, uh, but most really of all, nice one. yeah. So how are you, Mark? Brilliant, spawn, mate. Raring to go, chomping, chomping at the bit. Well, this is good, mate. Now, listen, you've got another poem for us, haven't you? And then we're gonna have a little bit of a chat. Yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got another poem. I've got another poem for you. That'd be good. I'll tell you about it, and I'll do it now. Is that okay? Yeah, brilliant. Yes, please. Okay. Now this poem is a sequel. So the one I did about court shorts. <laughs> and um, it's called Court With My Pants Down. <laughs> and it's subtitled, No One Likes a Smart Art. <laughs> oh, okay, so um, here we go. I had, I had the incident last time where I hadn't got me 30 pence. Now this time we're moving on from that. And it's, um, it goes like this. I'm off on my constitutional, whilst giving the council a retort. This time I've got my 30 pence, I'm not going to be caught short. Nature has given me a call. I'm getting a very serious rumble. I've got the coinage in my hand, not even the hint of a fumble. 
I sat down feeling rather smug. It's forward planning, you see. I started proceedings with confidence. Oh, no more mishaps for me. My contentment soon evaporated. My sweat, it turned to vapour. This is the cruelest twist of fate. There was no toilet paper. <laughs> I sat there feeling rather, I sat there rather awkwardly with a lump inside my throat. The only other option you see was my last 20 pound note. Against my better judgment, oh, dignity demanded its bizarre bid. Thinking with note in hand, this isn't personal list. That's it. <laughs> oh my goodness. So use a I'm 20-pound not. note, Mark. No. Poor Queenie. Edit that one, but do you want to edit that one before it goes out? Just to be on the safe side. I think it's a bit late, mate. It's gone out. <laughs> All right. Oh, put that as a don't know then. No, I love it. I love it. Mark, I love it. I I love the fact that you're always a little bit naughty. That's quite fun. So listen, mate, um, can I just say, uh, we were going to have a little chat though, weren't we? Because it's our sixth birthday and uh, you and Neil are the two longest um, members well, longest, as in who have been here the longest, I mean, um, in yeah, the group. Absolutely. And um, I just thought it'd be great for people just to hear a little bit about, you know, your story, how you came here. And, you know, you are doing so well. And, you you know, if people knew your background, they wouldn't believe wouldn't believe it, really, yeah. because you, you are, you know, you're right back to where you should be, aren't you? And life's good. And, um, you know, you're just grabbing it. And, um, you know, I love your writing, your acting. You know, you're so gifted. You've got so many gifts. But, you know, it wasn't yeah. quite the same like that three years ago, was it? Oh, no, no, no. It was a bit of, bit of a disaster uh, uh, three years ago, four years ago. I've, um, I've actually been sober um, four years and three months now. That's great. And um, prior to that, uh, I was an active alcoholic for 45 years. And I remember because when we were doing the play, the, uh, the cross and the switch play, I did my little bit with the trolley and uh, playing the wino. Yeah. And after one of the performances, a very nice lady, I think she was from Upton Vale, came up to me. And in a very sweet way, she sort of said, um, oh, I hope you don't mind me staying, but uh, you do play a very good drunk. <laughs> to which I replied, well, well, I should do. I've had 45 years practice. You know? <laughs> She gave, me, she gave me the knowledge sweet look as she gradually walked away. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. Absolutely. Oh, bless you. But, the, you know, what is what is great, Mark, is that, you know, um, you know you've been in the group and uh, it was tough at far, first. You went through Jattis and, you know, but you've got your own place. And, you, you know, uh, you are a testament to so many people that actually freedom happens. You know, there's so many in the group. You know, we're going to getting people like Holly back. And obviously we had, yeah, you know, so many of us. Absolutely. Yeah, so many. Yeah. And that actually, you know, it is possible because I think when you're going through it, you think, oh, the mm-hmm. temptation, it's so hard, you know, and people fall down and we, you know, people get back up again. Yeah. But um, Mark- well, when I when I was, um, you know, when I was uh, sort of at my lowest dead. I, um, I ate what is colloquially known as my rock bottom. And uh, by the way, that is not a medical condition. I just thought I'd mention that. Um, you got to think about bottoms this morning. <laughs> it's basically ostensibly where you're functioning, but in essence, you're basically dead inside. You're just going through the motions of an existence. Yeah. You know, and uh, I really got to that point before I went into Jackson. But, um, you know, Jackie's came just at the right time and uh, I've moved forward since then. Yeah. Well, brilliant. Mark, listen, can I just say a massive thank you for coming on and thank you for what you're doing with the poetry. You know, you are raising the bar each week for people and, you know, we're having, getting some yeah, great poems in. You know, we are going to have an Unleashed anthology. Wouldn't it be great to do, oh, definitely. to publish an Unleashed anthology when we come out the other side, which would be like a mark of stuff that people has done while we've been while we've been locked down. But Mark, thank you so much well, for joining what us. I thought, what I thought of doing with my poems, when, when we put a collection together, I'm going to call the collection Dodgy Doggerel. Dodgy That's Doggerel. That's going to be the, uh, the yeah. title of what I'm going to call it. Yeah, good man. What do you think for that? I think it's great. I think it's great.
Well, listen, mate, I'm going to let you go because we're sort of running out of time. My gosh, we've got so much to pack in. But listen, thank you, mate. We'll see you next week. All right. Your little avatars okay. here. Take All right. Care. Okay. Thanks. Mark, Bye now. take Bye. care, mate. God bless. Bye then. That's Mark. Bless him. Right. So, guys, what we're going to do now is we are going to, okay, we're going to see, hopefully, hopefully, here we go. We're hopefully going to see the um, the universal credit sketch that we wrote a while back. And the reason why we're showing this, because I just want to have a little word about what Unleashed is all about. This we did, oh gosh, was it two, three years, uh, about two years ago. No, Laura's in it. So it must have been about 18 months, two years ago. Um, but this was, this was written um, and it was written as a workshop piece um, uh, based on people's real experiences of what it's like to um you know uh, struggle with addiction homelessness all of that so guys here we go this is a bbc information service tonight we focus on the forthcoming introduction of universal credit here in the west country this change in the way benefit is delivered the way people more responsible for their own money make people really budget for what they've been given for the sake of our viewers, can you tell us how these changes will be implemented? Well, we're streamlining the system. Instead of getting that, their benefit from several different places, they'll just get one lump sum. Even the landlords, who are paid directly by the benefits office, will be paid directly by the tenant. It will give people a better sense of being responsible for their own money and, one hopes, make them take more responsibility for their own actions. What was? Throw the dice! And it's a three. One, One two, two, three. Oh, the brown set. Warren Rhodes. I like that. My name's Andrew. I've been in my old flat three weeks now. Liked it at first. You know, I'm in a roof of my own over my head. First time in two years. But, if I'm honest, the novelty wore off quite soon. And I started to feel... Uh, well, I started to feel really lonely. I didn't want to go back on drugs, but really it was Vic. I mean, he was the only person around here. And it wasn't long before he was coming around here with his mates, using it as a party house at the weekend. <laughs> the old crew, eh? Yeah. I tried to break away from him. Not really, I did. But... It's hard being on your own. I suppose it was inevitable. Right. Okay, go well, nice. And, and it's a four. Um, one, one, two, three, four. four. Right, you need to chest. Oh, after waiting six long weeks, your universal credit payment finally arrives. Well, I've never had as much money. What did I what did I buy? Well <laughs> new PC, uh, wide angle telly, new PlayStation, um the rest shot up my arm I suppose. Uh sorry, what what's that you say? The rent. <laughs> oh yeah, the rent, yeah. Well, the landlord wasn't too happy. But I told him I'd get the money soon when no. Towards the end of the month. Okay, move three places. Uh, one, one, two, two three. three. And the uh, chance your landlord evicts you for non payment of rent. Oh. Hello. Oh. Sleeping on a mate's sofa at the moment. Uh, I've got chucked out of my rent. I've got chucked out of my flat for not paying my rent. Look, I've had no education, I haven't got a job, and the only example of money management I've ever had, before I got chucked out of all, was my old man pissing up his money in beer before he got sent back to prison. And um, five, go to jail. Do not pass go, do not collect 200 pounds. <laughs> Oh, no. I didn't do it, did I? 
Stupid, really. I got duped into running drugs for my mates. Well, it was it was payment for him letting me sleep on his floor. I'm not a drug dealer. Not really, I'm not. I was just I was just the errand boy that got caught. Yeah, for six months. I suppose I'm really lucky. Could have been twice that. Five. One, one, two, three, four, five. That's good. It's one of the utilities. Oh, yeah. Now, is that the water board or is it the electric? Local Amazon channel. Oh, oh, oh. If you're not going to buy it, can I buy it off of you? Can you do that? Amazing job. What? Of course I'm going to buy it. When I was released from prison, they literally gave me 47 quid and sent me on my way. Great. Thanks for the help, bastards. Anyway, I got into the local homeless centre. And to be honest, they were amazing. They got me sorted, helped me with my benefit, and they got me a place in a shared house on the rehab programme. Uh, Throw the dice. And it's a three. One, six. One, two, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> ah, Warren Road. No, sorry, it's Windsor Road. It's the green set. I like that. <laughs> well, for the first time in a long time, I feel really good about myself. I've been with a group of like minded people, and the rehab programme worked really well. Now this is my opportunity to get back to where I want to be. Only four more weeks to go, and I move into my own flat. For the sake of our viewers, uh, can you t just remind us the reasons why the government are implementing uh, universal credit? Well, we're streamlining the system. So we're getting their benefit from several different places, they will get just one very big fat lump sum. The landlords, who are paid directly by the benefits office, will now be paid directly by their tenants. That's got to be a good thing. What was? I'm a landlord, and I'm not happy. Two blokes walk into an estate agent, rent my flat, one a single accountant, the other an unemployed, unqualified bloke called Andrew, with a history of defaulting on his rent. Who am I going to rent my flat to, Mr Minister? Hmm, that's a hard one. Throw the dice. And it's a three. One, One two, two, three. That's a ground set. Warren Road. Don't you have that one already? I've been in the old flat three weeks now. Liked it at first. You know, I've been a roof of my own over my head for the first time in a long time. But if I'm honest, the, uh, the novelty wore off quite soon. And I started to feel, well, I to feel really lonely. I didn't want to go back on drugs. It's a good thing, really. I can't afford it. Right. Okay. Roll the dice. And, yeah, that's a four. One, One two, two, three, three four. four. Ah, community chest. After waiting six long weeks, your big, fat, all rolled into one universal credit payment. Finally, all right. <laughs> okay, guys. So we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Um, so that was uh, my goodness. That was quite a while ago. But uh, what a great uh, sketch. And we actually had the. Um, we actually had the um, privilege of doing that in front of government ministers. Alor, I'm noticing that actually you haven't got your one that you um, you um, pimped up, your T-shirt that you pimped up. Uh, but guys, I just want to say uh, we, we are coming to the end. Uh, in fact, there's a there's a feature that I'm going to do for next week, actually. Um, I'm going to save it for next week because we are going to run out of time. I'm really sorry that we um, ended up having to start again. I hope that hasn't uh, spoiled your enjoyment. Um, we're going to do the NHS um, shout out uh, to the NHS. And I have got, um, in fact, actually, I think, no, I think I will do it this week. 
I've written, I've written um, I, I think I think what's great about Unleashed, which makes us different from other theatre companies, is the fact that actually we deal with reality and people are very honest. There's a brutal honesty about a lot of our um, guys. I think all of us know that actually we're all on the journey and that everybody's uh, fighting a battle. And so therefore, I think when people really start to express themselves through drama and start to write stuff, it can be quite gritty and it can be, I mean, that drama was based on real life experience of the guys in the group. Um, and um, just for your interest, when we come out, we've been talking to an organization called CAP, who uh, basically help people budget. Um, um, so that's really good. A guy called Nigel Pierce is gonna help us. And there are gonna be opportunities if people want to actually um, go on a, a, a I think it's a three, a three slot course uh, to help with money management. Uh, because that is one of the big issues that if you've never been taught how to budget and then you're suddenly given all this money, it's hardly surprising that people end up getting evicted and people end up using it on drugs and stuff. So anyway, lots of practical stuff. Um, NHS heroes. Uh, it's been a funny old week. My son actually was tested yesterday for COVID, so he's waiting to get his results. He's been working on a COVID ward. So it's been a weird week in many ways. Um, and um, it's not always easy. My sister-in-law, she's on um, intensive care. Um, Dawn and I haven't been feeling brilliant. So there's lots of stuff happening. Um, I just think it's really important that we're really honest about, um, you know, this is a tough time for a lot of people. Um, and I wrote this literally six o'clock in the morning the other the other morning um and it's meant to be a par a parable which we can actually act out um when we come out i want us to act this out and it's not meant to be a a, a dig at anyone it's really not but i think it's i was thinking about what do we really value in society and what do we value in life so this is a bit it's a bit like a story and we're going to be able to act it out and mime to it so it's called the parable of the nurse and the baron are you sitting comfortably then I will begin. In a land not that far away, in a time not that so long ago, lived a community of islanders. Their island was a lush, lovely place to live, and the islanders had everything they wanted and needed. How was this so, you might ask? Well, the island they lived on was owned by a very greedy and selfish giant. And the greedy, selfish giant owned pretty much every land in the whole kingdom, and his only demand of the islanders was that they must give him a third of everything they earned. Now, the giant paid an unscrupulous baron to make sure that people did exactly what the giant demanded. One day, the greedy, selfish giant said to himself, I want more. And so he decided to take the islanders, give him much. He, he decided to make the islanders give him much more than he needed in order to live on his island. This day came to be known as the Great Crash, because for many of the islanders, their lives came crashing down. They couldn't live on what little was left after they had given what the greedy, selfish giant demanded. And for 10 long years, many of the islanders lived just hand to mouth. The unscrupulous baron was happy to help the giant and made sure that everyone on the island paid their whack. Many found that they couldn't feed their children. Many ended up homeless on the streets and many were driven to despair. Food banks popped up all over the kingdom as the kind islanders tried to help one another. One day, the islanders decided to do something about this. And so a decree went out to hold a competition to find out who was the most important person in the land. This was so that they could make them the important decisions to try and change their dire situation. The day came. There were several people who pushed themselves to the front, all believing that they were the most important person in the land, all jostling for position to see who would win the title. First, the unscrupulous baron stepped forward, not wanting anyone to be more important than him. Look, let me level with you. I know you don't like it, but folks, you have to admit that I am the most important person. Things would be much worse if I didn't keep the giant happy. But the islanders, they didn't trust the baron. Because while they had all seen their wages capped or reduced, for the past 10 years, he had given himself a healthy wage rise. Next, a reality star stepped forward, really believing that she was the most important. Come on, guys, you cannot be serious. Where would this land be without me? Do you know how many people sit down and watch Love Hub every week? Six million. With these silicon beauties and my fitness regime, I'm not paid a six-figure sum for nothing. Of course I'm the most important. 
Next, a professional footballer stepped forward. Look, guys, at the end of the day, which schoolboy has not got a picture of me on his wall? I am a role model that they all aspire to. I mean, who wouldn't want to get paid £350,000 a week for kicking a bag of wind around a field for 90 minutes? Some of the islanders were sad as they hadn't realised how much the footballer was getting paid, especially those in the queue for the food bank. It's disgusting how much they get paid, someone said. Jane was in the queue. She was a nurse and she turned and said with a smile, I suppose they're only doing their job. I, I quite like him. So who do you think won the competition to be the most important person in the land to make the changes that people wanted? Um, sorry. Sorry. Who do you think? So who do you think won the competition to be the most important person in the land to make the changes that people wanted? Of course, you can guess who won the competition. Pulling in a few favours from his old chums. That's right. The unscrupulous Baron won. He carried on doing the giant's bidding and nothing changed. The seasons changed from summer to autumn. And then without warning, like the cold chill of the winter snow, a terrible plague swept in from the east. The islanders, one by one, began to fall ill and couldn't work. Fear gripped the land as many of the islanders died. The baron decreed that no one should leave their homes for fear of the terrible plague spreading even further. That is except the doctors, the nurses, the shopkeepers. Every day without exception, these folk got out of their beds and nursed the sick and helped the islanders get better and provided food for everyone. One day, the islanders turned on their TV sets and heard that the Baron had contracted the terrible plague was on the verge of death. The people were fearful. What will happen? Who will protect us now from the greedy, selfish giants? Jane the nurse sat by his bedside. She mopped his brow, adjusted his ventilator. She took his blood pressure. She administered his drugs and lovingly held his hands. You see, Jane didn't think of herself as important. Her pay packet didn't tell her she was important. She had always wanted to be a nurse from when she was a little girl, from the little wounded robin she had found in her garden when she was six and nursed back to life. She just knew that this was her role in life and she loved it. She didn't think she was important. She just did her job because she cared about people. And although a lot of her neighbours didn't like the Baron, to her, he was just another vulnerable person who needed her help, her love, her care, and she, had, she was glad to give it. Many weeks later, the Baron gave a press conference. He was better. He'd pulled through. He praised Jane as being the most important person in his life. Without her, he wouldn't have had made it through. He'd realised for the first time the real value of what makes something important. He was better. Jane hoped he would stay better. And so do I. I wrote that because um, I think our NHS guys are heroes. And um, I hope that when all this finishes, when the great pause finishes, that society will value people like bin men, shopkeepers, nurses, doctors, much more than they had beforehand with all the promise of funding for the NHS. Hopefully now that will happen. Guys, we're going to finish now because we've run over, but I just want to say thank you for coming. Uh, go out, clap tonight, the NHS. Um, guys, we, we do care about you. And uh, I just uh, you hope you have a safe, uh, keep safe this week. And we'll see you all next week. Take care. God bless.